Sarah. It's so sexy. Look at that. Booyah <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the Boat Works. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm in the middle of restoring the Alban 27 Pocket Troller that's behind me. For the past several months, I've been working towards being able to put in the new electrical system, kind of getting everything wired up in the boat. It's a complete rewiring from a bare hull and I've got to make sure that all of the electrical system is kind of set up the way it needs to be for some long-term cruising. In a previous episode, I talked about all the steps, the process that you have to go through when you're doing this type of boat rewiring project. There's a lot of good information there. You're going to want to check that out. After you've come up with your electrical budget, you've got your electrical plan, you've done your mock-ups and you started purchasing and sourcing all the components for the electrical system, well, the next step is it's time to start putting in all the panels and switches in the various locations where they go on the boat. This means cutting holes in the bulkheads, kind of getting everything set up and actually installing the actual panels where they're gonna be on the boat. Once this is done, we're one step closer to being able to run wire from point A to point Z and kind of hooking everything up. No wire goes in the boat until the panel locations have been determined and everything's kind of temporarily mounted to make sure that it fits and it's just the way we like it. This episode is gonna be all about the new 120 volt, 12 volt DC master panel that's gonna be going in my Alban 27 pocket troller. Let's talk about choosing a marine electrical panel. So there are a variety of companies that offer pre-made panels, custom electrical panels for your boat restoration project. But for my purposes, there's really only two companies that have the options that I need. One of them is Blue Sea System, and the other one is a company called Panotronics. I've used Blue Sea Systems on some of my other boat restorations. Sometimes I'll use a budget brand that I get off the internet, but you can't go wrong with this company. And it's what I recommend for the do-it-yourself boat restore. Panotronics is a company out of Miami, Florida. They offer a little bit higher quality panel construction. They're often an OEM provider for some boat builders. They offer some really attractive options off the shelf. Very high quality. My original plan was to go with Blue Sea Systems just for the value and the cost. But from talking with my electrical consultant, I basically determined that Blue Seas didn't have what I needed. My system was really quite large and complex, and I needed basically a bigger panel than what they offered. Now, don't get me wrong. I love those Blue Seas panels and all their components. But it turns out when you buy one of those off-the-shelf Blue Seas panels... It comes pre-configured with certain size circuit breakers, certain size components, and that may not match the actual system that you're gonna be installing. You would then have to go back and replace each of the circuit breakers that's not quite big enough for something else, and that's an added cost every single time that you do that. On a Panatronics panel, you can dial in all of the individual things you need. You can pick the panel material, you can pick the circuits, their size, you can pick the labeling, you can pick everything. It has kind of a semi-custom kind of bespoke feel to it. And cost-wise, and cost-wise, it's comparable to what it would take to do this with the Blue Seas, but a lot more control over the actual panel build. I ended up choosing what's called a Panatronics 3402. It's a combo, 100. 20 volt 12 volt dc master panel powder coated aluminum it's got digital gauges 18 dc circuits and seven ac circuits one of the options for this panel is it allows a recessed frame and the panel kind of sits inside this frame but the panel adds an extra inch and three quarters all the way around so i've got to make sure that i have enough room and to do that i've got my trusty template here this is what the electrical panel would look like if it had the exterior recessed frame. If it's too big, then I got to go to the smaller size, which is just the panel by itself, and it will basically bolt in place. All right, so this space right here, this is where the electrical panel is going to go. And 
All of the wires will come from the electrical locker basically along this side of the boat and then they'll come up inside here. The question is, how big can I go? Because when the steering wheel and the auto helm is on here, there's a bracket for the auto helm that mounts right here. Now I've taped this off to kind of get an idea of where things will sit, but you can see that this overlaps, so this will be a problem. So let's just put this on there and see, is there any way I can use the recessed frame? All right, so I just think the answer is that the, the recessed frame is just too big. It takes up too much space. So I've got to try and figure out what the size is of just the panel itself, and can I get that to fit? I'm back, and this is the new size. This is the size of the actual electrical panel, no frame. It's just an aluminum panel and it would get bolted to the surface here. Now, it's not as great an option as the recessed panel, but I think it's going to work just the same. And in fact, it may even be better because it's going to allow it to be a little bit higher than this step here. I don't want my foot hitting the electrical panel. So take a look at this. This one, here's where that bracket is, this can go right up against there. All this is important because if you remember when I was fitting the captain's helm chair, I made the determination that I need to push the chair back a little bit, that I need to redrill the holes approximately two inches further aft of where they were. And this is all to accommodate my large size and just being comfortable at the helm station with the sliding helm chair. So the question is, do I have enough room to do this once I put in the auto helm and all these other things that are gonna be on the helm station? I think the answer is yes. If you watch my channel, you already know Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors. I get no compensation from any of the products or the companies that I talk about on my YouTube channel. I do put links in the show description for some of the items that I use. If you want to try and find them, Amazon does pay a small commission if you use those links. How do you size your boat electrical panel? So if you're like me, you're probably wondering, well, how do I know what components are gonna be on what circuits? How do I know what loads to divide up and kind of group together? How do I know how many circuits I even need? DC versus AC, and how does all this kind of go together in the panel? Well, all of this is determined by your electrical budget. If you made your electrical budget properly, you will have a master list of all the loads that are gonna be placed on your electrical system, both 12 volt and 120 volt. You can then start to group them together based on how they're gonna be used, how you wanna access the circuits and kinda of group them ergonomically so that you have all the navigational stuff together and maybe all of the interior house boat items together. This gives you an idea of how to lay out your panel. How big the individual circuits are going to be, well, that all comes from the electrical budget. When I tallied up all of the items that go in the electrical budget and how much electricity they use, well, I also made a note of what the manufacturers recommend insofar as the fusing and the circuit and all this kind of stuff. This serves as a guide. It tells me how big each circuit breaker has to be. I'm so confused now. Can I just hire someone to do this for me? Now I'll give you a tip, something I didn't know, but I learned through this whole process. When you're building your electrical system and you're choosing your panel and kind of getting all that set up, make sure that you leave extra spots, extra circuits, so you can add items to the system later on. Maybe you'll get a new piece of electronic gear, you'll wanna add it to your system, it's gonna need its own circuit, probably particular size, where you wanna have slots to be able to kinda of put those in. Don't build a panel that's to the max capacity, no extra slots, you can't add anything to it. Ask me how I know. This is the main electrical panel from a company called Panotronics in Miami. I'm going to talk about why I chose this company. This is the 120 and the 12 volt DC panel. It's a combo. And they built it and sent it to me. So it is, uh, the, the, this panel is, I guess what you would consider 
kind of semi-custom because you get to specify the types of gauges and the circuits and their sizes and all sorts of things like that. The labels, everything. So, look at this. Look at this. That's some proper packing. Look, this whole thing's got the... Uh, Any foam in here? Do I just... Uh, what do I do here? Just as a point of reference, let me show you. This is what the old electrical panels looked like for the Alban 27. These are from back in 1986. It was just five DC circuits and just five 120 AC circuits. These were hidden in a closet down in the forward cabin of the boat and on a bulkhead next to the galley. You can see the new system and it takes this boat to the next level, maybe two levels. I don't know about you, but there are these moments in all my boat restorations where the project kind of goes from a fantasy to reality. I call them sparkles, and it usually has to do with spending a lot of money and getting some very cool piece of gear. Suddenly, the whole project unfolds before your eyes. In that moment, you get a taste of what this boat might look like. Will I ever get it done? We just have to keep moving. Do I need a frame for my boat electrical panel? In the boat works, one of the things I try to show you is the reality of what it's like doing some of these projects. I try to show you all the tips and tricks and some of the nuances, some of the lessons that I've learned doing these projects, especially when things don't turn out the way you expected. The Paneltronics panel far exceeded my expectations in terms of its build quality and the components and quality of the materials. It's really kind of something impressive to behold. However, I quickly realized that there were some problems trying to install just the panel into the helm station area of my pocket trawler. Before I ordered the panel, I did a bunch of research about its exact dimensions and took notes from the specification sheets from the manufacturer to really get an understanding of how big the opening needs to be and what exactly it should look like. Remember all the taping and all the measuring and all this sort of stuff that I did? Well, it turns out that reality sometimes does not match the specification sheets, that, that sometimes things are a little bit different. All of these panels are assembled by hand. Because I didn't purchase a frame to go with the panel, the hole that the panel has to fit in has to be extremely precise. Tolerances were so tight, I didn't trust myself to cut the openings do-it-yourself. So now what? The solution was to order the recessed mounting frame and somehow figure out how to squeeze it into the helm station. An extra $200. Now I want to be up front, my marine consultant and the Penaltronic salesman both encouraged me to get the mounting frame to mount the panel 
it makes mounting super easy and extremely professionally looking. If you're gonna be doing this sort of installation, make sure you plan ahead, order the mounting frame, don't cut any corners, ask me how I know. And I'll tell you, there's another concern with this panel. Because it's a combination 12 volt DC and 120 volt AC, new ABYC rules state that the 120 volt AC part of the panel needs to be enclosed with some type of enclosure that can only be removed using hand tools. This is to prevent anyone from electrocuting themselves should they open up the panel and start messing with the 12 volt side, not realizing that the 120 volt side may still be activated. You can say what you want about these guidelines, but the reality is, is now I have to come up with some way to enclose the 120 volt side of the panel. And as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of room back there. I have some ideas. We'll deal with that in another episode, perhaps down the road. Right now, I think it's time to get this panel mounted into the helm station on the Alvin 27. This is exciting today. I'm going to be cutting the opening for the main electrical panel at the helm. And I've got this kind of uh, pattern frame here that I made. Should match the opening perfectly. We're going to cut that out of the helm station there. Uh, using the chopper. We'll use this plunge cutter here. Should be able to get through the fiberglass and get this thing opened up. I trace the pattern onto the helm station, begin with a rough cutout, and then use the snake to clean up the edges and really get a very tight fit. This allows the hole to be very accurate against the panel. It takes about three go-arounds, but in the end, it's worth it. moment of completion. I love it every time. Wow, we've covered a lot of ground in this episode. If you're like me, I think you can begin to see how this is all going to come together and it's looking pretty good. I think the next step is going to be getting the electrical locker kind of all squared away. There are some mock-ups for some of the Victron Blue Gear, all the solar controllers, the inverter battery charger, the batteries themselves. All this kind of has to be squeezed into the electrical locker and the locker itself has to be prepared. Some fuel lines rerouted and a bunch of little things like that. We'll talk about that in a future episode. It'll be all about the electrical locker and why you need one. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor, leave a thumbs up and a comment below. Let the YouTube algorithm know that this is real boat building and you wanna see more of it. I wanna thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you're thinking about restoring a classic sailboat or an old trawler, check out all of the videos on my YouTube channel. Consider joining the workers or taking advantage of my boat restoration consulting services. I offer personal coaching for your boat restoration project. Be sure to like and subscribe. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you.